Well, good morning again. Good morning. If you look at your bowls, then you'll notice that I'm not Archie. Archie's preaching tonight, so pray, keep him in your prayers. As he prepares to deliver a message from the Lord this evening. And this morning I'm going to read from one of my favorite passages in the Bible. It's Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. If you're one of those people that like to mark in your Bible, What's preached from and put a date in there like Miss Annie does. Uh, you notice that you'll notice that I've preached on this passage before. But this is a different message. Same passage, different message. Let's go ahead and read the passage, Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 24. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces, Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much, that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city, and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion, sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they saw they that saw it told him how it befell to him that was possessed with the devils, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed to him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in the Decalogue. How great things Jesus had done for him, and all men would walk. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and for the many blessings you have given us in our lives. Father, we just thank you for allowing us to come into your house to worship in your name, to read your written word. Father, we ask that you be with us throughout the service this morning, that you will use this time to glorify your name, that you will open our hearts and our minds to your truth draw us closer to you. Father, just let your presence be felt here today. Guide us according to your will and accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As someone that's worked with the children and youth for a pretty good while, this is one of my favorite passages with working with the children. Back before we built the classrooms in the back and we just at the sanctuary and the fellowship hall and the little classrooms there. Sometimes we, after we finished our lesson, we'd go outside. 
death. One night when we were discussing in this passage, which the focus for the children was the power and the authority of God and Jesus over evil or the devil. And as we went outside, instead of just playing, we acted out the story. Yeah, that means everybody in the class had a part. They got to, one of them would play Jesus, one of them would get to be the pig, one some would be the evil spirit and get to ride on the pigs and run into the sea. Yeah. Because they had different parts, the children liked to take turns either being Jesus or riding on the pigs. So every time we did the story, we'd switch parts. So that night we had about 10 kids in the class said. So they heard the Bible scripture 10 times that night, so everyone had a chance to play a different part. Another time when I used this scripture in the past was when Annie and I first became missionaries. When we went through the process of applying and everything, when we got our confirmation letter, or when we were applying, we that we'll go anywhere you want. We know God has called us to home missions. And we're ready to serve you wherever you send us. And then we got our confirmation letter. And it said, you're going back to Lakewood. And so we understand how this man felt when he told, wanted to go with Jesus that he was sent back home to tell other Jesus. So at the time when the, the people, they wanted Jesus and his disciples to leave. So Jesus needed somebody that was familiar with the community to go and show them what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. And that's what this man did. But today I'd like to draw your attention to verses 6 and 7. That's going to be the focal point of our message today. It says, But when he was but when he was, I, I have something on there. Let me just read it out of the Bible. But it, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So even the demons are the unclean spirits recognize Jesus for who he is, and they recognize God's authority. But in the world today, the devil has blinded many to these simple truths. People have bought into Satan's lies that there is no God, or that all religions are equal, and that you can believe whatever you want to believe. But in John 8, 44, when Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, the Pharisees had accused Jesus of saying his witness wasn't true because he was testifying of himself. But they called Jesus a liar. But Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Satan was a liar from the beginning. And the Pharisees, even though they were claiming their heritage of the child of Abraham as their path to salvation, they were showing their true heritage by serving the devil when they rejected Jesus. And unfortunately, many people do the same thing today shows, or the evidence, is in their words and their actions. So this morning, let's take a look at a few of Satan's lies. The first one, that there is no God. I did a search on the internet, simply copying in the words no God, to kind of get a reference point to see what was out there, and I was overwhelmed with the amount of information, websites, Declaring that there is no God and I'm bring their proof. They have just, there's just one right after another. I never did get to the end of the list and didn't stay there long either. <clears throat> but the Bible has a word for those who do not believe that there is God. Psalm 
and none that do it good. Psalms 53, 1 says the same thing. It just rearranges a couple of words. But most of the verses are exactly the same. The Bible also tells us that nature itself declares that there is God. We can see God in creation. Romans 1, 19 and 20, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the wonders of creation gives us knowledge of the Creator. However, this is not saving knowledge. Another one of Satan's lies is that all religions are equal. That you can believe whatever you want, and that's okay. But this is simply not true either. <coughs> Micah 4 5 tells us that for all people will walk, every one, in the name of his little G God, and do what they want to do. But Micah continues on, says, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God, forever and ever. So people pick and choose what they want to believe. We can believe whatever we want. But that does not make it right or the truth. Jesus is the only truth from John 14 6. 1 Corinthians 3, or 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. There is only one true God, and only one path to forgiveness and for, to salvation, and that is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4, 4 through 7. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. God the Father saves us by his grace through faith in his Son, our Lord Jesus. Another lie is some say that you can pick and choose what parts of Scripture you want to believe. The 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible, this book right here, is God's Word from start to finish. Not one jot or one tittle is in error or is unimportant. God's word is everlasting and never changing. You believe and accept it all, or you do not believe in the God that's presented in the Bible. You say that you believe in Jesus, then believe his word. You can trust him. You say you are a child of God, then obey his word. If the Bible says it's true, it's true. And if this book says it's wrong, then it's wrong and continues to be wrong. God's word never changes. It doesn't change with whatever people say is morally acceptable. God's word sets the standard. Not we the creation. If it was wrong back then when the Bible was written, it's still wrong today. Scripture alone is authority. Scripture alone is God's word. Paul said that anyone who claims to have a message from God that is contrary to the message that is contained in the Bible or from when he first told others 
about Jesus, then they are not speaking a true message from God. We stand up here and tell you something is God's word, but it's not in the Bible, then it's not God's word. What we say and what we do should match what God has given us as his word. Another lie is some say that what right do I have to tell others about Jesus or that there is only one God or how they should believe? We do have a right to believe whatever we want because God has given us free will. He's given us a choice. He allows us to choose. And here in the United States, we have a right to believe and to say what we want because it's in our constitution.
and their heritage, by understanding their views. But we are still to share God's gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ. We're to share that through our words and our actions, how we treat others. And we are to give examples of why we believe. In Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Other people will never know the saving grace of our Lord if we who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ don't tell them. It's up to us. We are to share the words of Christ, the love of God, in every part of our life. Not just on Sunday mornings or Sunday evenings or in Wednesday night classrooms, but every day when we go out into our communities or our homes or our workplaces, we are to just demonstrate God's love around to those around us. So what is this gospel message that we are to share? First, that there is a God. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. That he created mankind his image. Now, where it says in his image, it does not mean we look like God. If it did, we'd all look just alike. Our skin color would be the same. Our hair color would be the same. But when, we, when God created us in his image, he gave us an eternal soul or spirit. He gave us the ability to choose, to know, to learn the difference between right and wrong. Did this that we may have fellowship with him. But mankind has fallen short of the goal that God has given us for our lives. In Romans 3 23, it tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have sin in our lives, and our sin separates us from God and breaks the relationship that God wants with us. John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves us. He loves me. He loves each one of you. He loves everyone in the world. He loves us so much that while we were still sinners, He sent His Son to die on the cross to pay for our sin and return us to fellowship. Romans 6.23 tells us that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because we have sinned, we have earned death. And this is not talking about the physical death of the body. This is often called the second death, also known as eternal separation from God. It's being sent to hell, the place that God prepared and his servants. And this is what we have earned because of our behavior. This is what we deserve. But because of God's great love, he sent Jesus to die for our sins that we may receive his grace and forgiveness. We cannot work hard enough. We cannot be good enough to ever earn a place in heaven. It is a free gift from God to all who come to him in simple faith. To all who believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord and Savior. There is no one on earth that God's grace is not available to. We have the choice to serve God except his Son. In verse 20, our original scriptures says that the man departed and began to publish how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did more. Again, if we don't tell others about Jesus, how will they ever come to know his same grace? If we tell others that we believe in Christ and we serve Christ, but then we go out into the world and act like the world and behave in an improper manner, then we're not leading people to Christ. We're turning them away. 
There was a change in that man. There was a change in his appearance, in his actions. He was in his right mind. He, he became a new creation or a new creature, cleansed by the healing touch of Jesus Christ. When we come to Christ, there will be a change that others will notice. Our actions show what we truly believe. Our actions are our main witness to others when we say we love Jesus, we love God, we serve Jesus. Our actions, the proof is in the We don't behave in a certain manner to earn a place in heaven. Because you can't earn it. It's a gift from God. Not a our actions show what we believe. We say we believe in Jesus. But we need to live as he calls us to live and demonstrate God's love to those around us. Today I want to leave you with the same question that the demon-possessed man asked Jesus back in verse 7. What have I to do with thee? What have you to do with Jesus? It's your choice. You can accept him. Or you can deny him. There's no sitting on the fence. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, the heart man believeth unto righteousness. <coughs> and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are you living for Jesus today? Or are you a hindrance to those around you to be jealous and to be served Jesus? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day, Lord. Father, we just thank you for this time to present your word and your truth. Father, we ask that you'll guide us in this time of invitation, that you'll use this to speak to our hearts. 